What's up, Coachella? <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you for existing. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, I want HK and Kevin to start talking. Why? <laughs> Just talk about the film and like how fun we had, how much fun we had. Sorry, I'm really nervous. Yeah. I think I think that's a joke. It wasn't 100% fun making the documentary. And what was your sure. role, Kevin? Which I was um, editing it with HK right here, and um, it was a very long process. We started about the same time they started the album, and there's about like 500 hours of footage to go through and eight terabytes of footage, and it was crazy, so. Uh, for context, we started the album two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so they started the documentary two weeks ago. <laughs> You guys watch it prior. Is this your first time watching it? Anybody here? What y'all think? Oh boy. Oh boy. That's, that's heavy. Yeah. It definitely uh, tugs some heartstrings, jugs some tears. I feel you. Can we fix the mics? Do I have to hold it like this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone else's first impressions? I would love to know. Jump up! Hello, everybody. So I, I think we should give these guys a round of applause. Yeah, and, and just more context, I don't know. Um, basically, we turned it in like two days ago, two or three days ago, and like we didn't, we didn't really, we shot, and the original idea was supposed to be like Abbey Road documentary, but it just turned into let's tell this story of, and let's just be transparent and honest, and um, that's why it was such a heavy project, and, and we, we did have all this Abbey Road footage, we just, we were so close to getting to it, it's just uh, the deadline for the LA screening and everything. I don't know how much of that I'm allowed to say. But. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, Kevin. <laughs> say whatever you want. Just keep talking, man. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I, I wanted to do the Q&A because I was like, this is therapy for me. Like, I was, uh, three days ago, I hadn't slept for 24 hours, and I was just, I went straight from editing to giving it to these people to play here, and that was it. They were like, once you give it to us, like, that's it, and I was three hours past the deadline. <laughs> the only 
only time I remember watching it was when me and Kevin, we had to, we had no time to fully watch the whole hour, so we had to watch it in triple speed, and we're just looking at images <laughs> and making sure that, like, like if there's a, if there's anything messed up, we have to check it because like we have 10 minutes to turn this in. We're gonna watch it at triple speed. We're just gonna like make sure we turn it because that's the only time of quality check that we had. And I mean, I mean it is what it is. Like if you guys saw whatever like like little hiccups or whatever. I mean you know what I'm saying that's just that's just raw human. You know what I'm saying expressions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Woo! I have a question for you guys. Um, what was your favorite part of the doc? Just go down the line. All right, I'll start. Um, my favorite part, actually I want to change my question. Let's go, bro. <laughs> what part of the doc uh, moved you the most emotionally? I think, um, really just like, People giving insight, really just like the, the interviews, I think, like were my favorite part. Like, because this is our like second documentary that we made, and like we wanted to kind of like make it like this, you know, but we couldn't have like the resources to like give the insight that we wanted to. So I think like adding people's like perspective and into this, like, like interviews from guys and Kieran and like everybody in here, I think it was like some of my favorite elements into it. And like, just like hearing how people told the story in like different ways and seeing it through different lenses is my favorite. Yeah, I think, I think that's incredible. And there was, there was a lot to process throughout the documentary and there's a bunch of different like narrators in my head. Um, but my favorite, my favorite part or the, the part of the movie that moved me the most was maybe the Europe part where it was a montage and it was just uh, just to get me out of trouble and then um, just like getting to that point was so hard that like to me it's just like wow like this and that song's amazing to me and being able to just kind of have that cathartic release um, I, I love that part it moves me a lot every time I see it like there's parts of the movie that obviously like make me cry but that one that one still like moves me so much. <laughs> Am I supposed to answer that now? <laughs> Do you want a different question? No, nah, that's okay. Um, I think the most, the part that moved me the most had to be Hawaii. Like, I saw it last night. Watching that part was really hard for me because, like, that was the, like, I've never experienced such heavy conversations with a group of people that I love. And it was just such an uncomfortable time, but it looks so beautiful. And I feel like people would not understand like what we experienced there. And like, just like, as Joe said before, like playing back my life and in like real time, that's just crazy to me. And that should just, I don't know, it affected me a lot. Yeah, I'll say that part. I would say Hawaii as well. Um, for similar reasons, I think, like you said, with the deep conversations and a lot of like bonding and moments where I felt like we were so close and connected there that it, it really helped me just um, find a way to feel whole and, and human again. So yeah, that's why I moved me. I think the part that moved me the most was probably that like montage of Europe because just knowing like how heavy life was before all that and then to see like clips of everybody and at one point or another seeing a smile on everyone else like on everyone's face and seeing that people were kind of like you can see people processing in real time in the documentary, which is really fucking jarring, being one of the people processing the shit that I'm talking about right now. But um, seeing everyone find that clarity 
as you like see these clips of us going through Europe and it's feeling almost like those like clips in the very beginning when people were like riding around with Ansel and just like being free, you kind of like almost feel like that same feeling again, but like with this sense of perspective and like maturity to it, which is just really interesting to see. Cause I really haven't processed that until like just seeing it just now. But I think that was like the part that moved me the most. I'm sitting up here asking myself, like, what, what moved me the most? And I don't know if I'll really be able to answer that question 100% truthfully until I watch it by myself, because I was kind of more concerned with uh, what people were thinking about it. Um, but Ready for War video made me cry. And the Hawaii trip made me cry. I would say those two things back to back were the most emotionally moving um, parts of the documentary for two different reasons. Uh, Hawaii felt like being born again in a way. And I don't know, the craziest part is it's, it's, it's all still new. Like it didn't take place that long ago. So it didn't, I don't know, I look at myself and I look at everyone on the stage in front of you and like everyone who was in the documentary and worked on everything that we did and like we've all changed so much even since then which wasn't that long ago so I don't know I guess I'm just still kind of picking apart all the pieces that led me here and that in itself is kind of distracting from how I feel because I don't really know how I feel sometimes um, and all this is very interesting. Um, what to me the most uh, emotionally moving part is definitely also the Ready for War video. Just because of uh, how serious the video it is and just the intensity and then to have it end with like the satisfaction of finally like getting that shot. It reminds me of all the moments we had where it was just like, just the satisfaction of hearing your work back or like watching a video back, etc. And I feel like we kind of lost that for a while. And uh, it wasn't again until the Abbey Road that I saw that again. And I feel like uh, that part also made me emotional. Um, for me, it was probably Hawaii as well, just because. Um, I really like how it kind of the the way it was captured. It, it really did feel like a like an exhale after all the stuff prior to it, and uh, I love how it's edited together, like and with the piano and then, like seeing like, just all the pictures of how it's like quiet and like beautiful Hawaii was, and um, I think that's that part in particular is gonna like gain value over time because like it is kind of hard to really capture for like everyone else even us like how important that trip was but uh i think with time like people will see like that was like a really like special moment for us so i'm shout out to hk and kevin for capturing it and ashlyn and ashlyn of course <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, my name is Merlin. Merlin. Uh, the part, I guess, the part that moved me the most. When Romil, when Romil was talking about uh, seeing his parents off stage and having the moment where he didn't know if the show overall was gonna, going to go on. I definitely had a similar experience with my parents, like where like, very emotionally, I said, I don't know what's next. I said, I don't know if the future is as sure as I thought it was gonna be. And I suppose it never is, but 
being able to see the next chapters after I thought everything was hopeless. Like being able to see after, like I thought, I thought the end was sure, like visually, like in Abbey Road of all places, was iconic. <laughs> like that gave me hope. You know what I'm saying? Insecurities, but like these people saved my life, so it was just really, really special. Anyways, um, you guys have questions for us? My glasses aren't on, so uh, anybody want to pick? We have one. You want to pick somebody? <laughs> What's good? What's good? <laughs> I just want to say real quick, because uh, I always got to make it a point. You guys, all of you, I can never, ever, 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 ever thank any of you enough, like individually as a whole. Like, this nigga over here talking about y'all saved his life, y'all collectively, like, and I'm talking about all of you, everyone that's helped all you guys, the Clancy's, everybody, like, you guys saved my life, and I know that you guys definitely have done it for other people that are in here, so I just want to say thank you so much. And I also want to say, y'all are all so fucking handsome, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> And y'all don't stop, like this shit's crazy. This nigga's over here rolling around with handsome niggas all the time, everywhere, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, congratulations guys. I really, I really, 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 really can't wait to see what you guys do next time. Thank, Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. He didn't even have a question, he just said what. It was so nice, I don't know you should pick somebody. I can't see one. Right here. What's our all's favorite documentary that's not Brockhampton? <laughs> uh, it's the Oasis documentary called Supersonic. You guys should all watch that if you haven't. 
Dear Zachary. Dear Zachary. Yeah. That's a really good movie. <laughs> I've never seen Dom act like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, eight days a week, Beatles. That one was very inspirational for the set, honestly. It was um, being able to see a band that big. And I, I honestly did not know much about the Beatles before. And so, like, being able to just watch the documentary, it tells me all of these things. And it was like, I don't know. I, it was very inspirational, and so I would say that one. Also, the uh, the in search of Doc, the NERD one is Doc's inspiration as well for us too. So that was a uh, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Rose, our big brother now. <laughs> no cap. Uh, Pink Floyd, live at Pompeii. Oh, nice. Jim and Andy, the documentary? Yeah. That's my favorite yes. one. Yeah. Okay, hello. Um, I'm wondering what your guys' like dream venue to play out would be and like when you think they'll be there. Madison Square Garden out there? Tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know, I've always like, if not necessarily a venue, but I've always had a dream of like, making a festival in like my hometown. So like whatever the main stage of that would be, I don't know where it would be at or how it would be, but like I would just love to do something like that one day, like make a Coachella in Hartford, some fucking house. But yeah, that, that would be my dream stage. I don't think I have a dream venue because I just enjoy performing. So I feel like it's more about how many venues I can go to and have the opportunity to, so that excites me more than any specific venue to go to. But Madison Square. <laughs> the BET Awards. <laughs> Let's end on that one. Nobody can top that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so this is more directed at the members who have like stage names other than their names. Um, why did you decide to take on a different alias and what was the inspiration behind each of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you want to take that one? Matt Champion. Um, well, I took my last name. Was, my first name is my actual name for music, but my last name is my mom's name. So I just took that since I can't use that legally and figured I'd have that be like the name that like everyone knows because I want people to know my mom's name. Aww. Aww. I, I actually didn't know that. So Joba is the name that my brother gave me when we were growing up. So he, I have an older brother, he's three years older than me. And growing up, we had our own little language that we would speak. And, uh, his name was Seba, and my name was Joba. And he made that very clear. And if anyone has an older brother, like you obviously just want to be cool. So I was like, dude, I'm down. Just embrace the language, embrace the name. <laughs> my mom would call me Russell, and I'd like ignore her. And she, she, would, she would have to call me Joba. So I picked the name just to remind myself not to take myself so damn serious. Um, it works sometimes. Um. 
<laughs> There's no like fun or interesting. Well, the delay on this mic is like fucking up my speech. It makes me feel like I'm silent. Um, yeah, there's no like interesting, cool fucking explanation behind my name. It's like really fucking stupid. I guess. <laughs> but like all names are dumb. Like all names for all bands are stupid. Like the Beatles, what a dumb name. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that even mean? Yeah, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, let's spell it B-E-A-T. Like, what a cool dude, like. Shots <laughs> fired. In the Beatles got beef, no. I'm just kidding. Um. Look at that. I can't talk that, so I'm gonna move on. Brandon! Sometimes, like, I be feeling like William, and other times, I just feel a little bit extra. In the seventh grade, I thought this yeah. guy was cool. His name was Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> and I asked a friend of mine to describe my music, and he said abstract. Boring story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right, this is the last question. Make it good. Last question. Uh, you're Pressure's on. Mm -hmm. We haven't picked anyone up there. See <laughs> anyone pass this light? I, I hear you, but I can't see you. <laughs> Someone over here. Let's do the person dancing in the white okay. jacket. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> do I stand? I'm not kidding. Alright. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet you. I'm Nirvana. <laughs> the question is, how do you... Um, think that the tone and the narrative of iridescence differs from like the saturation trilogy and puppy and team effort and yeah that's it <laughs> well i think that like that would be a different answer for all of us individually but for me um I think that iridescence has this level of intention to it and this air of maturity that we were looking to get with things like puppy and team effort. Um, and then in comparison to saturation, I think that the, in, the intent is similar in the sense of like, it's coming from this place of purity and we all kind of like, we're just like, fuck it at both of those points, making saturation and making iridescence, we were just like, you know what, like, let's just try anything. And it's like, you can kind of see the difference of like, what trying anything gets you with saturation and trying anything gets you with iridescence when like, people actually start giving a fuck and start believing in you and you get the resources to like, now when you say, let's try anything, you can bring a kid's choir in, you can bring an orchestra in, you can go to fucking Abbey Road and make an album. Like, all of that shit's ridiculous. So I think that you can see with that music that we're very self-aware of the position that we put ourselves in and we have a lot more things we know exactly how and what we want to say in the moment of making the music because I sometimes don't know what the fuck I'm talking about otherwise. But um, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yes. 
Y'all don't mind? It's y'all's time. Okay, they don't mind. She had a question. She had a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Y'all don't mind? Yeah, y'all don't mind. You sure? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Kevin, could you tell us about the time that you met Pharrell? Woo! Yes, please. It was awesome, man. It was really cool. It was like two weeks ago, you was there. I know. I know. I'm, I still, I still like hearing about it, though. <laughs> Like, like, did he know who you were before he, before we even met that day? Yeah, it was cool. I didn't think uh, he was familiar. I just heard that he wanted to meet us, and I thought, like, he just thought the name was cool, or like he saw a video or something. And uh, but he, but he had seen your name before. <laughs> <laughs> you tell that story. <laughs> it's not my story though. <laughs> but, but like, yeah. But like it happened to you though. Like, I, I could tell it. I could. I could tell it, but it's not my story. You guys want Merlin to tell it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry to the fan that I cut off. That is taking so long. Um. You right. Okay. Okay. So. So basically, uh, Bro would always see these two usernames pop up on his Instagram. <laughs> That's not the story. I don't. It's not my story, bro. He said he used to see my comments on Instagram. It's not. It's not like that. Cause I've never commented on Pharrell's Instagram. I would comment, I think, on Tyler's Instagram, and he would see my name. And he's a big fan of Q-Tip, who goes by uh, Q-Tip the Abstract. And he just like I don't know the name stuck out to him because my name's Kevin Abstract. That's the way, tell the story the way you remember it. Cause it's funny the way you remember it. I, I remember two people, okay, for all saying, two people he always used to blow up his Instagram comments. <laughs> and and, the, and, the, and the, those two names that he, he remembered were uh, Felicia the Goat and Kevin Abshad. <laughs> It's pretty similar. This story is similar. Y'all are gonna go to wake up tomorrow. Both these stories are gonna sound the same. What was your question? Oh, oh damn. The mic's coming to you. Okay, well, um, I'm Maria. Please milk me. <laughs> Hold on, huh? Um, we made a bed upstairs. I know, I'm just playing. Don't, don't. Okay, so, um, first of all, the best boy band since One Direction. Woo! <laughs> and it's not really a question, it's just like, I feel so thankful that you guys are like literally, you guys care for us so much. You guys didn't have to go out of your way to do this, line up before come on, guys. And you guys are the sweetest people ever. and. Your fans will really love you guys. So thank you. Oh. Don't be me. Yeah. What's the question? You can scream it. The other day, you said, this is the most important scene to me, and then he, oh. and then, and then he cut it. It's K-pop. Yeah, there was a lot of moments like that, and um, I guess that just sits with me. That's it, that's all you get. Kevin Donate ain't saying nothing. That's all y'all got. You're going to please him like that. It was tough. There was... It, it was a thing of cutting it down and also we didn't get to some things because there was even footage in Puppy that like, you know, you're just trying to go five times as fast as like someone normally would. And so 
you're, you're just trying to analyze and like take in just the frames and see how they feel and then be like, okay, this feels good. I'm gonna throw it in there and then cut it down. So it really, there was a lot of moments and I, I love, I love, I love making the documentary and, and being able to see those moments. The most, the most important moment, um, you don't know. Just save it, save it, save it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say something. Thanks, LA. Uh, yeah, they're cutting us off. HK, I'm just letting like, you know they're cutting us off after this. I'm sorry, guys. No. I don't know if I want to even say it. Not say it, though. All right, well, this is just more just like me, Joan, and uh, Ashlyn. Use how many gigabytes of footage is it? Bro, you know what Ashlyn be doing sometimes? He'll just lay the camera down and hit record. Sometimes it'll be in frame, but he'll just leave it and then like go to like camera store or something like that. So two hours of just like the lights. It'll be like eight hours of just lights and that's like 20 gigabytes. And we gotta go through it and then maybe like, oh, oh, maybe they're in the studio working on something in between the two hours of something. So like, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but there's also just like, oh wow, look at the graph. But you take those and you, you be creative and that's why those time lapses were in there because they were cool and we use that angle and just like we're able to show that we passed time wait 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 let's ask Ashlyn the question a lot of to clap back for the record if he says something I'll just I mean his is the truth Cody I mean Ashlyn you know like you really be doing that so you can't really you can't really just knock on me man you know you'd be dropping the camera and just do it before you say anything uh, this feels like Mars <laughs> okay, first off, leaving the camera there, that's an artistic, visionary thing. So, um, yeah, what's the question? What was your favorite part about the whole process? And which album do you like the most out of the three that we made that didn't come out? My favorite part of the doc is, uh, I would say the Hawaii part, just because I remember it so vividly. Yeah, the delay is fucking me up. Um, it was just such a, a wholesome moment, a theme together, growing together, just good vibes all around. It was fresh, as y'all would say. Um, my favorite album would be Iridescence. It's got bangers on it. Y'all gonna see. Y'all gonna see soon. Cool, my favorite album's Pencil. I don't know about y'all. We out? Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you.